Hello and welcome back. And our party is here. And we defeated quite a few kobolds with, again, one single sleep spell. So Malin can do more than just hold the lamp. The manual does say that mages start off the weakest but become the most powerful. When he gets to cast more than one sleep spell, I can see him becoming much more powerful just at level 2. I also have been keeping a tally of all the XP, and we did very well. We found 1000 gold worth of topazes, and we've actually found some good treasure, killed several monsters. The rust monster has still been the most lucrative, and my three first characters, Ben, Donard and Malin, are now on 1000 XP each. That happened quite quickly. I'm not complaining. I think our next direction would be west to fill in this area here. Liz and Sylvia listen at this door and um, they hear nothing. Now it says in the dungeon description that most doors are stuck. I suppose that's my description discretion to decide which ones are and which ones aren't and this entire area here is a cobalt layer and these doors won't be stuck because they will be moving to and fro all the time so they open this door and this is room 68 and it actually has no description it's just a corridor and it has off it three doors so let's just listen at the first door this one here and this is Liz and she as a thief successfully listens on rolls of one to two and this room is described as another closet 10 foot by 20 foot and she hears singing very faint singing in a language she doesn't understand coming from behind the door I suppose their first interpretation would be this is someone trapped as a prisoner so that would motivate them to open the door and go in the other thing about the door is that around the edge there is cloth has been squeezed into the cracks as some kind of padding and the first thing they do is they tear that off and the singing becomes much louder and everybody can hear it so they open the door this room is empty apart from on the floor is a small urn u-r-n that's made of silver and it continuously sings an old elven lullaby now sylvia recognizes this lullaby she falls quiet and she looks down at the floor. It's actually making her feel a bit homesick. Liz glances over at her and suddenly realises that Sylvia is actually in some way an exile from her own home due to this curse. And for the first time Liz realises that's actually quite horrible. I think on Sylvia's advice they won't touch the urn. She thinks it's a horrible thing and they agree that it is weird. Now, were we to take it, it would be worth 200 gold pieces. But because it constantly sings, it makes it difficult for us to get surprise. So we'll move on to the next door. We'll listen at it. By the way, I do believe two people can listen at a one door. In fact, everybody could listen at a door. It might look a bit Scooby-Doo with everybody listening. But... And this is Liz, or Sylvia, and she listens. There's no, She doesn't hear anything, but of course that doesn't mean there isn't anything. So for example, in this room here, somebody successfully listened, but didn't hear anything, even though this room had two ghouls. And that's because ghouls make no noise. All undead, even skeletons, 
make no noise, so skeletons don't have that Ray Harryhausen rattle, as you might expect from bones. This is the chieftain's bedroom. This door is locked, and it requires a key to open it. We have found a key. We found the gold key, so we immediately unlock this door. And this is the bedchamber of the kobold chieftain. He has a bed and a treasure chest. Now we're going to search the room. Liz is going to search the chest for traps. She doesn't find any traps. But the first thing they do is search the room. Remember, we are moving at a very slow speed. And underneath the bed, they find a key. So they try the key in the tre treasure chest and they open it. And inside the chest is 800 silver pieces, 150 gold pieces, a small emerald studded bracelet worth 500 gold pieces, a wand of magic detection with 42 charges. That's going on our mage, our magic user. There is also a note from Bargle ordering the kobold chieftain be on the lookout for adventurers. Make sure to not allow them to proceed to the lower dungeon level. We presume this note is written in Cobalt and we can't read it. Well that's a nice haul of treasure. The Wand of Magic Detection will be very good. Again, when do you use it? Do you just assume everything you find could be magical and use it all the time? Or do you wait until the end of the day when you look at all your treasure and try and detect it together. I don't know, we'll play that by ear. That leaves this door here to the north. And we're gonna listen to that. And Sylvia listens successfully and she hears kobold language. Now it says there are four kobolds here. But we have a fifth, because one, from the very first day we entered into this dungeon, ran into here. That was several days ago, and I'm going to assume he has also recovered all his wounds. These guys have AC7 and 3 points each. What do we do? Well, the state of our party is such. Ben is on four hit points, he's using his crossbow. Donald is on six, which is fairly good. Malin, Liz, and Sylvia haven't been touched, and our dwarf retainer is on eight. We found a healing potion with two doses, and Ben wants to get fighting again, so he is going to drink one of those healing potions. Oops. And it does a rather measly 3 HP cure. Right, so we've got one left. Okay, so we barge in, we op throw open the door and charge in. They can't surprise us. We know they're there, we've heard. Do we surprise them? We don't. Who gets, initi who gets initiative? Whoops. They get initiative. That's not good. Right, so it's five kobolds. We've got two on Ben. Two on Donard. And one on our retainer. One on... That's one miss. That's one hit on Ben. And that, he loses his three... HP that he just got cured. That's a miss on Donard. That's another miss. And on our retainer. Another miss. Our go. Liz. Hits. Does four damage. Takes one out. Sylvia. Misses. Donard. Misses. Where have I seen all this before? Ben. 
Misses. <laughs> Character Dwarf. Hits, takes out another Kobold. Right. Round two. We get initiative. Good. Liz. Misses. Sylvia. Well, that's a hit without any bonuses. Two damage. Not enough to take it out. Donard hits, takes out a kobold. Ben hits, takes out the damaged kobold. Carrick misses. There's one kobold left. It's turn. Does it run? No, it fights on. And it misses badly. Clearly distressed. Right. Next round. We win initiative again. Liz hits. Does one damage. Sylvia misses. Cleric hits. Takes out the last kobold. And that was three rounds. So let's search this room. This room is identical to room 42. It is indeed. Except that one of the kobolds carries a potion of gaseous form. The kobold does not know what the function of this potion is and dares not drink it. And we have an entranceway to the east. Now this is not a door, so I'm going to assume that everybody in this room heard the fighting. We're going to assume, because this is open, there are more kobolds here. So Ben moves over into crossbow duty. He's back down to 4 HP. Do we run in here? Yes, we do. Now I need to read the description. This is the kitchen, and there's a large fireplace in the north wall. Carcass on the spit looks suspiciously like that of a dog. Kind of cannibalistic then, as kobolds are half dogs. This kitchen is for the tribe of kobolds. Um, the pair of kobolds tends the fire in this chamber, preparing meals for the rest of the tribe. One deals a long cooking knife instead of a spear, dealing 1d4 minus 1 points of damage. The other wields a hot spit. The other grabs the hot spit off the fire and attacks with it dealing 1d4 minus 1 points of damage, plus 1d4 fire damage. They charge any intruders. And there's two other kobolds here as well. So let's go for surprise. I have a feeling this won't go well. Oh, nice surprise. All right, let's go for an... That's initiative, not surprise. They get initiative. All right. And Donard, 16, hits him, 1d4 minus 1, well, that's a 1 minus 1, I'm going to say, it's still a 1, the second one, 14 misses, now the one with the spit is on our, Claire, is on our dwarf, misses, and the second one, which is just normal, 17, misses. They need an 18. Remember, he has AC1, the best of all of us. Four kobolds. Let's take them out. Bands on crossbow. 14 plus 4 hits. Dots 1 gone. Liz. Misses. Sylvia. Misses. Donard. Hits. Two plus one. Takes out another one. Carrick. 
hits, completely creams the kobold. And there's one left. Round two. It gets initiative. Morale. And it runs. And the only place for it to run is into room 64. What indeed is room 64? Where indeed is room 64? Okay. And Okay, now do we chase after them? I'm undecided. I would say, yes, we do. So, it runs into there. We run after it. There will be surprise. And we discover there are eight kobolds in here. Oh, sugar. That was actually not expected. Plus the one that just ran in is nine. Okay, we'd better get surprise. We do. So we get a free round. Let's take out five of them. Right. Ben. Misses. Liz. 11 plus 1 for dex bonuses AC7. Plus 1 for short range. She hits AC7. That's 1 dead. Sylvia. Hits. Excellent. Another one dead. Donard. Misses. Our dwarf. Misses. Okay, well that's seven. Oh dear, that's three each. On our two frontliners. And one... Well, four. That's one on Donard misses. Two on Donard misses. Three misses. Three on our dwarf. One misses. Two misses. Three misses. One more on Donard. Misses badly. That was seven misses. Not going to complain about that. Right. One, two. Oh god, they get initiative. Right. One miss on Donald. Two misses. Three misses. Four misses. Three on our dwarf. Eighteen. Hits and does two damage. Sixteen misses. Eighteen hits again and does another one. Argo. Ben. Misses. Liz. Hits. And one has got one HP left. Sylvia. Misses. Cleric. A plus one is nine. Misses. Our dwarf. Misses. Holy. Right. Round three. We get initiative. Bam. A double one. Liz. Misses. Sylvia. Hits. And takes out that cobalt with the one HP. Donard. Misses. Carrick. Misses. Okay, there's five of them left. No, there's six of them left. 
that was a miss on Ben. Donard, sorry. Another miss on Donard. Another miss. Miss on our dwarf. Another miss on our dwarf. And another miss on our dwarf. Okay, round four. Mutual. Let's go first. I want some good news. Ben hits, takes out a kobold. Liz hits, takes out a kobold. Sylvia misses. Our cleric misses. Our dwarf hits, takes out another kobold. There's three of them left. But they still get all their attacks, as that was mutual. Donard misses the one on the one on Donard. That's two misses. That's a hit, and it does two HP. He's down to three. Three on our dwarf. Miss. 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 Run. Whatever, round five is this. We get initiative. There's three left. Ben hits very well. Takes out one. Liz misses. Sylvia. Misses. Donard. Misses. Carrick. Hits and completely creams the kobold that hit him. There's one left. And it hits. And that's Donard down to 1 HP. And it gets initiative. It's on Carrick. And it does 3 HP. And that's him down to 2. Right. One Cobalt. And it's gone. Okay. We're definitely going back to Threshold after that fight. Holy moly. Ben is on four, Donard's on one, Carrick is on two. Well, there's not much to say about after that, is there? Okay, see you next time. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. I'll admit, in that last fight, the remaining Cobalt switched targets from Donard to Carrick. That was me playing the nice DM to a party of beginners. Please note, I did make the call before I rolled the dice, and I'm glad I did, as we would have lost our cleric. Carrick, the retainer, isn't happy at taking so much damage. Ben offers the dwarf a room of his own in his own home, instead of laying up in a dusty inn, but the dwarf reckons he will just go his own way. Ben then offers him another 50 gold. I made a reaction roll, and Carrick refused that. Ben upped it to 100 gold. And that spurred on a reaction roll of 11, which means the dwarf accepted this. He also expects all his meals and drink at Ben's house for free. Liz grumbled about Ben bargaining with what is effectively everyone's money. Liz and Malin go back to their own house. They immediately go upstairs to Liz's room and close the door for a secret conference. They hadn't done this since they were kids. They empty their piles of gold onto the bed. This is a lot of money, says Malin, stating the obvious. There's a hell of a lot more where this came from, Liz reminds him. Don't you want to do anything with it other than just spend it, he asks. What else can you do with money, she replies. I mean, says Malin, spend it with a purpose. I told you I have a purpose, says Liz. I'm going to ride into Specularum and establish myself. You 
On the other hand, she reminds her brother, have to pay back our parents. Shame I had to steal from them just to do what was expected of me, says Malin. Liz is puzzled. What do you mean? Malin goes to his own room. He comes back holding a cloak. Its hem has been deliberately torn off. He throws it onto the bed. At least now I know some magic. I can leave home and I won't be an embarrassment to the family. The cloak was part of the shearing ceremony where young men were expected to leave home and seek experience in the world. It was meant to be an honour, but Malin saw it as an exile. He was certainly not built for fighting. It was a Traldar custom. Most in Threshold were Traldarian, and even those of Thaitian heritage made many Traldar customs their own. Liz touches the tattered cloak. Malin was an embarrassment to the family. They certainly didn't give many gifts with the shearing. Yet he still walked about town like he didn't care, or he acted like he didn't care. Her brother had a certain bravery she had never before appreciated. She was glad the same wasn't expected of herself. Are you going to become a wanderer like Sylvia, says Liz, and magic as well? You two have a lot in common. I'm sure she could mentor you. Why don't you like Sylvia, asks Malin. She's done nothing wrong. I do like her, says Liz, not very convincingly. I just find her idea of walking around the world not knowing why a bit creepy. She doesn't even seem to be worried about finding a cure. It is a curse, Malin reminds her. And anyway, isn't that what you're going to be doing when you're rich? What do you mean, asks Liz. Isn't that the whole point of being rich, says Malin, so you don't have to do anything anymore? You can just wander about the place and you don't have to worry about anything. It's not the same thing, Liz retorts. Sounds like a curse to me, says Malin. Later that evening, when his parents went to the tavern, he puts a hundred gold coins into their secret savings jar. Then he adds ten more, 